My first memory of honeysuckles was when I was a kid in preschool. My friend told me you could eat a sweet nectar from the flowers by pinching the base and pulling out the quote, stick looking thing. Growing up in North Carolina, I saw these honeysuckles on every corner. Well, when I grew up, I was informed that those pretty plants were actually invasive species from Asia. From this article, I found out that invasive and introduced plant species are actually not the same thing. Invasive species are species that spread rapidly and cause harm, whereas introduced species do not cause harm to the environment, human health, or other resources. The Japanese honeysuckle was introduced outside of Asia in the early 19th century. It is now invasive on every continent except for Antarctica and some island groups. The plant has, for the most part, been naturalized in many areas. This means that the species has been integrated into its foreign ecosystem. There's still some hope left to manage its spread and control local infestations. William Kerr, a gardener and collector for the Kew Gardens, is responsible for the initial displacement of the Japanese honeysuckle. Later in the 19th century, a man named George R. Hall brought even more of these honeysuckles and made the issue 10 times worse. One thing that helped the spread of the Japanese honeysuckle was ornamental gardening. Everyone wanted this plant because it's vibrant flowers, pleasant scent, and long flowering period. This article explains why being able to predict the potential distribution of invasive plants in an area of land is vital to organize and plan management in that area. The Japanese honeysuckle are heavily populated in the Cumberland Plateau and southeastern mountain region. The regional distribution of Japanese honeysuckle is influenced by many different environmental conditions, such as elevation, slope, and temperature. The models talked about in the article found that the Japanese honeysuckle has just about reached its potential distribution. The researchers concluded that, quote, Japanese honeysuckle tended to be associated with a high component of farming or low component of forest within a local neighborhood. This suggests disturbed forest and or high fragmentation has a higher invasion potential, and given past trends and expected continued population growth, this disturbance and fragmentation will only increase. Yikes. So basically, this invasive species is only going to keep spreading. The author of this article, Parker Gibson, examines bush honeysuckles, more specifically the amur honeysuckles, and their role in the environment. The amur honeysuckle is found predominantly in the eastern United States. People have tried to eradicate these plants through many different methods. Newspapers and articles have classified amur honeysuckles as invasive problem plants. The plant's database has it listed as invasive, banned, or prohibited. So how has a plant so pretty and cherished also been hated so much? Well, these plants can be problematic in many different ways. The amount and variety of flora that would normally grow is significantly decreased near the honeysuckles than by untouched land. The presence of amur is coupled with the reduction of native wildflowers. This reduction of native plants disencourages native animal species to thrive in such areas. Birds that live in areas occupied by honeysuckles have decreased in population and variety. Some songbirds try to build homes under the plants, but the branches don't have protective vines or thorns to keep safe from predators. To make things worse, when the birds eat the honeysuckles' berries, they lose their natural color, which messes up their mating patterns. Who knew such a pretty and decorative plant could be so destructive? Well, this plant could actually also be considered good. What? I know. Let me explain. In this article, the authors describe how large-scale removal of invasive honeysuckles has impacted mosquito populations and their avian host abundance. Scientists conducted an experiment where they recorded the population of the mosquitoes and birds before and after the removal of the honeysuckles. The scientists found that the removal of the honeysuckles reduced the mosquito and avian populations. This is because the areas that are inhibited by the honeysuckle plants support microclimates that are favorable for the reproduction of mosquitoes. Even though the amur honeysuckle is defined as invasive, it is interesting to see that in some ways it grew to be beneficial to this environment. I feel like we've learned a lot about honeysuckles in the past four minutes. Thank you for sticking around, and maybe next time you walk past honeysuckles, you remember their relationship with our environment.